Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Today we're going to talk about two things which I think are cool. The first thing is the Fibonacci numbers, which you may have seen. You may have met them before, you may not. If you haven't, you're probably very young. Uh, and the second thing we're going to talk about is generating functions, and we're going to use the latter to find out some stuff about the former. So I'll very quickly run through what a Fibonacci number is. It's a sequence of numbers, uh, and it's actually a family of sequences, but we're going to talk about the main ones. Uh, and then we'll talk about how we use generating functions to find out some stuff about Fibonacci numbers. <coughs> so Fibonacci numbers, you, you, start with the, you start with zero, and then you, you, you go one. And then you make every next number is the sum of the two previous numbers. So zero plus one is one. Now one plus one is two. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 13, 21, and 34, and it just goes nuts from there, right? It grows very quickly, not too quickly, but quickly. And it's a very mysterious sequence, and it's a sequence that comes up a lot in nature, because any time you sort of start, it's a very reasonable recur uh, recursion relation kind of growth rate idea. It's not surprising that this is a fairly natural way for things to grow. But the question is, so the rules we have are that a0 is 0, a1 is 1, and ai thereafter is equal to ai minus 1 plus ai minus 2. So you take 1 before and 2 before, and that makes your current one. So you say, well, I'm here. What do, how do I get what's in there? I say, well, it's this plus this. And the real problem with this, this all makes sense, it's all wonderful, but I can't jump over to spot number you know, 1000 without knowing what's in spot number 999 and 998. And so I can't possibly compute, or at least at this stage, I can't possibly compute any number in the Fibonacci sequence without knowing all of the preceding numbers, which is a massive bummer. So what do we do? We use the concept of a generating function. So a generating function says, and I'm going to mainly use, I'm just basically going to use the Fibonacci sequence as an example that should enlighten just about the whole concept. Generating function says, let's make a power series. So suppose we have a sequence A, I, or A, N if you like. I'll use A, I for no reason. Uh, this is a sequence. What's the generating function? Well, it, sometimes you use the capital letter, and I will today. It's a function of x. x is uh, usually a complex variable, but for today and for, for a lot of applications, this is a formal power series, which means x doesn't really have a meaning. It's just kind of there. a of x is, well, it's a0 plus a1 times x plus a2x squared plus a3 x cubed, and so on, right? You go off to infinity with this power series where the coefficients are ai. So here, this subscript matches with this superscript, and you could use kind of Einstein notation, if you like, uh, to just say ai x to the i. So, what the hell's the point of this thing? Well, here the hell is the point of this thing. Let's find the generating function for what I'll call AI, which is the Fibonacci sequence, okay? I'm being really naughty there. AI equals Fib. What I mean by that is that the sequence AI from zero to infinity is the Fibonacci sequence. Well, what do we have? Well, so A of X then is, well, it starts off with zero. So A zero is zero. And then uh, one times X. And then, you know, one to x squared, but, you know, it goes on and on, and it looks like the sum. So here's zero, and then one. It's the sum from two to infinity of a i x to the i. But we know stuff about a i, right? We can make this smaller. We can say this is x plus sum from two to infinity of a i minus one plus a i minus two times x to the i. And if we do a little fudging, what we can find is that we've kind of got a Fibonacci sequence in here and here, just kind of hidden. It's pretty cool. So let's split these up. 
This is now the sum from 2 to infinity of ai minus 1 x to the i plus the sum from 2 to infinity of ai minus 2 x to the i. Now what do these look like? I'm just going to shift. Well, x still looks like x, of course. But let's shift this. Let's say, well, let's let i now, i take 1, I want that to be my new thing. So we'll call it j for the sake of argument. The sum from 1 to infinity now, j, j goes from 1 to infinity, of a j, and the power on x is always 1 bigger than the subscript here. So this is x to the j plus 1. And the same thing happens over here. Now, i minus 2 is running from 0 to infinity. So 0 to infinity. And it's a j x to the j plus 2, right? Because this power is always 2 bigger than the subscript there. And well, we can see that this is now x plus x times the sum from 1 to infinity of a j x to the j plus x squared times the sum of a j x to the j. That's from 0 to infinity. And since a 0 is 0, we can just pretend this goes from 0 to infinity all along. Because, you know, a 0 is not having a role. But what do we see here? Well, what we see here is that there and there in these brackets we have a of x. The very definition. And so this says that a equals x plus x a plus x squared a. And now, now we can solve for a. And what we get is when we bring it all over the side, we get a, a times 1 minus x, oops, minus x squared equals x. And so a of x is precisely equal to x over 1 take x take x squared. Well, that's cool. But what the hell does it mean? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what that would mean. Well, actually, I have a huge idea. What are we going to do? We're going to write this out a little bit nicer. We're going to try and write this now as a power series and then match the coefficients to get a perfect, a, a perfect closed form solution for the nth Fibonacci number. So a of x is x over 1 minus x take x squared, which itself equals minus x over x take phi times x take psi where phi and psi are given here and it can easily come just straight out the quadratic formula. Now we decompose using partial fractions and we get a over x take phi plus b over x take psi and we solve and this one is an exercise. We find this. We find that a can be rewritten in this form. 1 over root 5 times 1 over 1 minus phi x take 1 over 1 minus psi x, where phi and psi are the two roots of that polynomial 1 plus x plus x, sorry, 1, uh, whatever it was, okay. x squared plus x take 1, that's right, or 1 minus x minus x squared. So, this is now a generating function, and what can we do with this? Well, we can use geometric series to rewrite these things. Ax is then 1 over root 5 times what? It's 1 plus phi x plus phi squared x squared plus dot 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 take 1 plus psi x plus psi squared x squared plus dot 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 and a big bracket to close it off. And now we can rearrange that to get an exact formula for the coefficients. So it looks like 1 over root 5, which is a, times uh, 1 minus 1, right? Duh, that's a 0. And then we have psi, uh, phi minus psi times x, plus phi squared minus psi squared x squared, etc. So the nth coefficient is phi to the n minus psi to the n 
x to the n, and this goes to infinity. And so, the nth coefficient of our generating function for the Fibonacci sequences is this number, phi to the n take psi to the n over root 5. And that means that's our nth Fibonacci number. So a n equals phi to the n take psi to the n over root 5. And that's awesome because we know what phi to the n is and we know what psi to the n is. And so we can just go ahead and calculate. And usually we can, we can calculate this with extreme accuracy for the reason being that we know that this is always an integer. So we don't actually need to know very precisely the value of root 5 or of phi or of psi or their powers. We can just do it until we're sure we're closing in on the right integer. And that is why generating functions are awesome. There's actually a billion trillion other reasons, but that's kind of reason number one.